This is Brother Watkins. I'm going to be your professor for Accounting 231. Uh, you're all my online students. And so what I'd like to do is help you to see how to begin in Accounting 231. So this is the online screen that you get when you get into Instructure. Go to the course. your Section 300. And it should take you to that course. Let's try this again. There we go. So now you see section 300. This, uh, let me move it over a bit. Well, you can see everything. Is the main uh, screen for your course. When you get here, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to work from the very top here with the syllabus. And each of these blue lines is something that you're going to do as you move down the course. Ultimately, to finish all the way at the bottom here with your QuickBooks exam. Let me see if I move that. Your QuickBooks exam at the end. So let's go back up to the top and basically how it works you click on it. I'm clicking on the syllabus now. It will come up in a screen that you can read or you can download it as a Word document. Either way. Uh, please review the syllabus. You have 900 points available in this course. It's just a straight performance kind of grade. It's not curved. Uh, you get what you earn. So let's take a look back at the main. Okay, I have um, information about the testing center because you're going to be in the testing center demonstrating that you finished the work that's required in this course. So the, the best thing that you can do, in fact it's so important that I make it an assignment as you've read through everything. I'm going to have you take a test, this quiz here, just to uh, make sure that you've read through the syllabus and the various requirements. But I want you to take this document, which is your test deadlines, and I want you to print this out and post it somewhere in your apartment. Take a picture of it and upload that picture. Okay, all your tests are going to be on Tuesdays. Uh, don't talk to a friend and find out that you think that you're going to have an Excel test deadline at a different day because as online students your deadlines are different than everybody else's. I've given you the weekend so that you can you can finish on a Tuesday. The testing center closes at 11 on Tuesday so that should be a benefit to you. Let's go back up. Um, notice how I am navigating through the course here. On the side here, you'll see the ones here that are in regular type. Uh, a lot of students like to use the syllabus. Show you how this works here. Uh, I would prefer that you don't use the Canvas syllabus because all you'll see if you open the Canvas syllabus is just the assignments and their due dates. You won't see my various comments and the other uh, hints that I'm making. Okay. So try to avoid this screen. Try to always use what I've set as the home screen. And that will keep you out of trouble. Okay, the posting of that test schedule has to be done by Saturday the 18th. Um, everything else, you'll go down here. These are short videos on the Microsoft website for people who have absolutely no idea what Excel is. This document here is particularly important. One of the things I'm trying to do in this course is teach you how to comply with the formatting rules that you're going to be given in whatever firm or company you get your first job in. A lot of times corporations have very strict rules about how their output is supposed to look. So I've given you my strict rules. Let's take a look at them. Uh, this is a seven page Word document. This one I think would be worth your while to print out because what I do is I go through the kinds of things that you're going to be graded on. Okay, So each of these little sections here, uh, there's about 11 rules that you need to know and essentially all of your Excel work you'll be held to these rules. And I have pictures to show you. Okay, there's 12 rules there. Um, on the test, although I'm very picky about these rules, you can turn in something that looks completely junk and if the numbers are right you get 90 percent. Okay, I have a mercy rule. I'm only using 10 percent of your grade for these formatting rules. But you want to get all of the points possible. 
So I would advise you to print this out and to begin uh, looking it over now for your practice. Let's go back to the home section. Your first two Excel modules here, the fixed payment amortization schedule and the fixed principal payment loan schedule are quite easy. I'm helping you get up to speed there. What you're going to do is you're going to start by looking at the sample test. So let's take a look at that. And this sample test is almost identical to the test you'll be handed in the testing center. All right. Um, I always put in here that I might add an additional instruction here just to make sure that you're reading everything. Now you look at the front of your exam. Why do I have all of this? I have all of this because one of the big problems in your course is that students sit down, they do all of the work, but then they upload a blank worksheet or they somehow mess up the, the uh, procedure so that I can't grade it. So what I've done is I've done a checklist and all you have to do is just check each step, stay on board and you'll be fine. Okay, so this is what, this is what your test will look like. Uh, on most of my tests you'll know exactly what I expect. So let's go back. You've looked at the test, printed it out, have it next to you. How do you do this? Well, what I give you for each module is a video tutorial that consists of me explaining step by step how to do the Excel work that you're responsible to learn. I also give you a sample file. So you can take a look at that, uh, bring it up in Excel. I think it's coming up right now, it is. And this is a 100% on the test. So if you want to know exactly what it is I'm trying to show you how to, how to uh, prepare, um, one caveat, my, my machine is using Excel 2013. Uh, you will be using Excel 2010 until I can get the testing center to switch. So this is your first spreadsheet. You're going to learn how to do that. Uh, this is a link that just goes directly to the video. You don't have to know how to do that. All right, so let's go back. We have two modules, modules one and two, with deadlines on the 28th of January and the 4th of February. But at the same time, you're learning pivot tables. Pivot tables, for those of you who don't know, are a way of visualizing data using the Excel program but it's really completely different than Excel. It's kind of like a program within a program. You have 25 of these things to learn before your deadline of February 18th. One of the reasons I've made the first two tests easy is so that you have time to get started on the pivot tables. Now, to find the videos for pivot tables, you first click on this introduction. It takes you to a page that will explain some of the pivot tables and how we're going to learn them. And then at the very bottom of the page, here is a link to a spreadsheet. Let's get to the spreadsheet. And the spreadsheet will have a number of pages showing you how to do the pivot tables. I'm opening it now. What I think would be the easiest way for you to go is to take maybe one or two of these little videos, they're five minutes uh, roughly each one. Let's pull it up here and start practicing now. Okay, so here's what comes up. You'll see a little password thing. Don't let that bother you. That's just so you can't make changes to it. Type read only. Just hit the button and it will open. And when it opens, if you were to print this table out, okay, if you were to go file print and just print out this introduction, I've designed it to serve as a uh, syllabus for you, just on the pivot table stuff. Okay, so you might want to print that out and save it. But for each of these steps, I have a video, and these these blue links here will take you directly to a video. So you have to learn these pivot tables, each one. Here's the video. Let me just show you something I show my, my class students. If you look at the first video, it's going to come up. This is pivot table A1, and you'll see that it has 1,465 views. Okay, let's get out of that. Now, if I were to go back 
And if I was to go down the list here, say to D5, I have 800 views. This is Brian Watkins. And and what is the difference between the 800 and about the 1500? The difference is so many students put off preparing for pivot tables that they never even get to this. And as a consequence, they end up failing the midterm on pivot tables. So start now. Take one or two of them a day. Uh, just practice them. The secret to success as an online student is to practice every day. Um, my grades in the online class are either failing or A's. There's rarely anything in between. You either work on it, find that it's quite easy, or you put it off and then you end up failing tests. So those are the first three modules for Excel. On top of Excel, you're expected in this course to learn QuickBooks. QuickBooks is going to be done a different way. I'll record a uh, separate QuickBooks introduction video for you on that. But essentially you're going to have a uh, set of transactions which you're going to learn how to do. There's a, an assignment here that's a, a Word document and then there's a video to show you how to do the assignment and then you're going to go into the testing center and you're going to do the same work. Now the difference between QuickBooks and Excel is that with your Excel work you have one chance. Okay, You get in there, you take your test and that's your test. But with the QuickBooks practice you can go as many times as you need to before the deadline and try to learn how to do it. Okay, so hopefully you only need to do it once. You practice in the library or on your computer and then you go in a couple days before the deadline and you do it. It's done. You don't have to worry about it. But if you get it wrong, you can go back and take that one again. I have four QuickBooks practices and if you look at the main page again, you'll see that I've put the QuickBooks inside the Excel modules. So here's QuickBooks Practice 1 is due on the 21st. If you want to see them all together, go down the bottom, here they are all together. So if for some reason you can't get you can't get the link to work from inside one of the Excel modules, come down to the bottom. There's four. January 21st, February 25th, March 11th, and March 25th. Now your points in QuickBooks come entirely from the final. Okay? If you turn in a late practice, I take points off of your final. Okay? So that's how I grade that. Your final is a pass-fail. You'll go in, you'll take it, and if you don't get it right, you'll go take it again. Each time you take it, I take 10 points off your score. So don't let this wait till the end. You'll be ready to take your final in QuickBooks by about March, okay, right at the end of March. So you'll have two weeks to get that QuickBooks final done. Um, for people who've practiced every day, it's not a problem. They come back and they tell me that it was quite easy. So as a beginning student, what are you going to focus on? You're going to read the syllabus, take a look at the frequently asked questions, okay, go through the policies and procedures, learn how I grade, learn what I call hard coding, what's not allowed, if you miss a test, you're allowed one makeup for the whole semester, and that's the retake policy. If you have an excuse and you're going to miss a test, you know, sick child or an emergency, you had to pick someone at the airport, you call me first, and then you get a, a form here. And the reason why I have a policy and a form is so that the testing center uh, will be able to let you in after the deadline. So take a look at that policy. Okay, remember that test schedule is coming right up. Uh, watch some of these formatting rules of thumb and just start working. And uh, frankly, uh, all of these tests are going to be available for you as of Monday. So there's uh, every possibility that you could finish up your work in this class a few weeks ahead of the final and then focus on your other classes. What you cannot do in Accounting 231 you cannot cram for the test on the last day or the day before because you're not being tested on knowledge. You're being tested on a skill. You're being tested on how well you use the computer. And if you practice every day, you'll make mistakes and you'll get yourself into problems and learn how to get out of them. Whereas if you just look at the formulas and memorize them, you're going to find yourself in the testing center and it's going to be unpleasant. 
So just remember that. This is a skill class. It's not a knowledge class. It's just something that you practice every day. I don't know if you took piano lessons when you were younger, but uh, when I do it, it looks easy because I've done it so many times. But you're going to have to go through it step by step, figure out where you need to study, learn that, go back and take it again. And you can get far more out of regular practice of an hour a day than you would get out of 10 straight hours the day before the test. So I look forward to working with you. Uh, all of my hours and my TA's hours are listed here. If you have any questions, you'll find that I respond well to email. Uh, let's see if my email's on here. I think my email is in the syllabus, but I will make sure to put the email right here so that when you log on, you can see what my email is. Uh, good luck, and I look forward to working with you this semester.